Mr. You can start now. Okay. A very good evening to all distinguished colleagues. I'm Dr. Samir Muchala, heading the medical affairs at Zydus Healthcare Limited. At the outset, I'm sure you and your loved ones must be safe and healthy during the current trying times. It gives us immense pleasure to invite each one of you today to our live webinar termed Surgico Herald, with a special focus on technical challenges in management of common bile duct stones. The incidence of CBD stones in patients with symptomatic cholelithiasis varies widely as per published literature, maybe between 5 to 33 percent if stratified by age. Treatment is advisable to avoid complications like obstructive jaundice, cholangitis, or pancreatitis. Factors like difficult anatomy or difficult stones may pose challenges during surgical interventions, which is important because there are vital organs in the vicinity of the hepatobiliary tree. To enlighten us more on the technical aspects related to management of CBD stones, we have with us today Dr. Patnayak, who actually requires no introduction. It gives me great pleasure and privilege to introduce Dr. Patnayak. Dr. Srijoy Patnayak is consultant in GI laparoscopic, bariatric, and metabolic surgery. He is the governing council member of Association of Surgeons of India from 2015 to 2021. He has been the organizing secretary at the recently concluded mega event ASICON 2019 at Bhubaneswar. He has also conducted the IAGS conference for the first time in Odisha, again in the year 2019. He is a pioneer in laparoscopic and bariatric surgery in Odisha, and he has got the rare feat of successfully organizing two national level conferences, namely ASICON and IAGS, and that too, both the conferences meeting a grand success. May I welcome Dr. Srijoy Patnayak and request him to take the academic proceedings forward. Thank you. Thank you, Samir. It's a nice introduction. We have already briefed what, is, what are common bile duct stones. We have just gone into the introduction. And it's a very common subject. So I thought of sharing with all the doctors and the surgeons. It will be quite lively because it has got a lot of videos in it. So first of all, I should thank Zydus for this division, especially Dr. Samir and his team for giving me this invitation. So I will definitely justify my lecture. Uh, so let us start now. Can we? Can we go ahead? Go ahead. You can go ahead. So today's good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, webinar. I hope all of you are doing fine with your fa spending a nice time with your family in this trying times i hope i hope that you all stay safe and healthy and lead a normal life during this very precious corona times so my today's topic will be cholelithiasis otherwise it is known as common bile duct stones or cbd stones so what are the present technical challenges uh -huh. 
Coming to the introduction first. Kole Doko Likiasis refers to the presence of gallstones within the common bile duct or we call it in short CBD. The incidence is around 15 to 20 percent of patients with cholelithiasis. If patients, those who have gallstones, in them around 15 to 20 percent are likely to have common bile duct stones. You should remember there are primary stones that originate in the bile duct and secondary stones that have descended from the gallbladder. So in most cases, it is the passage of gallstones from the gall gallbladder into the bile duct. In primary stones, which is very rare, the bilirubin is the dominant component and is always associated with biliary stasis and infection. Whereas in secondary stones, they are mostly, mostly cholesterol dominant and primary CBD stones are less common, which I told you earlier, and typically occurs in a setting of bile stasis, example cystic fibrosis. And also in when the biliary tract diffusely gets effect, affected both intrahepatically and extrahepatically, you land up with biliary stones. So this is the picture where you see the secondary stones in the gallbladder. They pass on to the common bile duct. Huh? So they are known as secondary stones. This is another picture, schematic picture, showing the same also. The gallbladder, the hepatic, the common hepatic duct and the common bile duct. Now the clinical manifestation. They might present in two ways, either uncomplicated cholelocolithiasis or in a complicated pattern. So though in the uncomplicated variety, most of the patients are symptomatic but without any complications. The literature describes the prevalence of asymptomatic common bile duct stones in between 5.2 and 12 percent. They present with right hypochondrial pain and epigastric pain, typically biliary colic, nausea and vomiting. The pain is often prolonged for a few hours and then subsides. Typically they present with, they might be afebrile with normal counts with the normal pancreatic enzyme levels. They are mainly diagnosed with abnormal liver function tests. And abnormalities in the imaging modalities like ultrasound or a CT or a MRI. So on physical examination, the patient has got right hypochondrium pain and epigastric pain with or without jaundice and a palpable gallbladder. Whereas in complicated cholelocolithiasis, so they land up with in two major complications. That is one is acute pancreatitis or it might be acute cholangitis. So in acute pancreatitis, Patient typically complains of nausea, vomiting, elevated serum enzymes and lipase levels in the biochemistry. Whereas in acute cholangitis, they present with in charcoal stride, mainly spiky fever, colicky uh, right upper quadrant pain, and jaundice. And there might be associated leukocytosis. When there, when in the uh, when bacterium and sepsis sets in, and the patient may present with hypotension and altered mental status. Whereas a long-standing biliary obstruction may progress into cirrhosis, which is known as secondary biliary cirrhosis. So what is the problem with this another entity is the retained CBD stones. The primary we have talked, retained is something which we have missed and is a bigger problem because you have operated once and the patient has come to you again to, to just to be diagnosed as a retained which has been left over. So one to four percent have been noticed to have retained. CBD stones even, even after cholecystectomy, 5 to 10 percent even after once they have been operated for common bile duct expiration, 20 percent of them who has repeatedly undergone common bile duct again underwent re operations for residual recurrent stones will develop CBD stones. In 5 to 12 percent, retained stones are might be asymptomatic, but what happens to the surgeon? He is frustrated, culpable, and there is loss of rapport with the patient. And the expenditure definitely goes up, uh, it starts frowning, and the risk of complications grows up gradually once you keep on operating on these patients. So, how do you describe this common bile duct stones? The primary, as I have told you, they are brown pigment colored stones, the muddy, muddy mud like, non laminated, whereas secondary stones are usually cholesterol stones dominating, so they are laminated and faceted. The other one is the primary is non laminated, whereas the secondary are laminated stones. Whereas residual stones which are missed at the time of cholecystectomy is evident within the span of three years, whereas recurrent stones which develop in the ducts after surgery, after three years only you see them. So recurrent common bile duct stones, what are the causes? 
may be due to cholangitis, may be due to primary stone which I talked, may be the biliary stasis somewhere, there may be strictures to either any anastomosis or any uh, uh, anastomotic or a stone might form over a foreign body nidus. Suppose you have done a lap pulley over that, that stone might form a clip or a stent or a worm or you have missed a colloidal cyst. So retained CBD stones really land up in big problem. So what you do? Patients who have undergone cholecystinic colloidal orthotomy, both, they again not have CBD stone. They are known as retained stones because why this happens? As it was missed, eh, it is during surgery or formed again de novo known as recurrent CBD stone. It might be retained or it might be recurrent. So those two different terminologies are different. So, this retained or missed CBD stones causes are due to inadequate, incorrect preoperative assessment during surgery or it might have spontaneously migrated from the gallbladder in the interval between the pre op evaluation and the time which you operated upon. It might be migration from the operative during the operative manipulation when you do a lap pulley, you keep on pressing on the infundibulum and the cystic duct so the stones might slip into the combined duct. Or that might be a technical error or misjudgment during CBD clearance when you do a laparoscopy open surgery or <clears throat> your team has had an in inadequate completion check or there has been an interval between first primary ERCP with stone clearance followed by lab coli, the interval must have been more, more than a month or so or stones in a long cystic duct or there are intrahepatic stones or stones in the cystic duct stump. So what is the presentation of this biliary stones or CBD stones? The patient have abnormal liver function enzymes, there is biliary pain, there is obstructive jaundice, there is fever, there is pruritus, there is cholangitis, there is pancreatitis and half of them almost land up in an emergency. So what lab test would you advise then? So always remember early in the course of biliary obstruction, when mild biliary obstruction takes place, the AL serum, ALT levels and the AST levels get typically elevated. But once the jaundice progresses in the later course of obstruction, these enzymes typically elevate in a cholestatic pattern, becomes plateau, it increases in this bilirubin, alkaline phosphatase, DGT, and ALT and AST. And always remember, all, an elevation in the serum bilirubin has a sensitivity of 69% and a specific of 88% in diagnosing common wild toxins. Whereas the elevation in serum alkaline phosphatase, the value is around 57 to 86%. And elevated serum BGT, ALP, and bilirubin levels were in interdip independent predictors of common bile stones on a multivariate analysis, the odd ratios being 3.2, 2.0, and 1.4, respectively. So, what imaging studies? How are you going to diagnose this? Number one is a trans abdominal ultrasound, which is most common and you find it everywhere in any, any center. Second is the endoscopy ultrasound, it's very costly equipment though, but it has recently come into the imaging modalities. CT is almost aware, uh, available in all centers, most almost in every city. And MRCP is MRI, means magnetic resonance cholangiography is a must nowadays. ERCP is the endoscopic domain, so surgeons as well as the gastroenterologists have started going into this and there is intraoperative cholangiography that is when you do a cholangiography third seventh is the interductal ultrasonography which is latest addition to the armamentarium and a percutaneous transhepatic cholangiography is the domain of the mainly interventional radiologists so i'll go one by one of each imaging modality trans abdominal ultrasound is one of the mainstay it was the initial imaging study of choice in suspected cholecholithiasis. It evaluates gallstone as well as common bile duct stones, however, if it's a dilated CBD. The best thing is that it's readily available, non-invasive, permits bedside evaluation and is very low cost, around 500, 1,500 per ultrasound. The sensitive range is from 20 to 90 percent with a specificity of 91 percent. The only drawback, has, drawback it has is there is poor sensitivity when the stones lie behind the distal CBD, behind uh, the duodenum. So it gets obscured. So dilated CBD is suggestive, always suggestive of 
political theosis, but not specific for political theosis. So what a lot of studies have done, a cutoff of 6 mm is often used to classify a duct being diluted. So there is a probability of a zone in the CBD with the increasing diameter of the CBD. So you see 0 0.0 to 4 mm is a 3.9 percent, it grows gradually. If the common bile duct is diluted more than 10 mm, there is a 50 percent likelihood that must be having stones. So you can see in these two pictures, you can see the common bile duct here and the distal impacted stone. Similarly here also, you can see here a stone in the common bile duct. What is US? US is an endoscopic ultrasound. It involves the convergence. This is the US you can see. The, this is the endoscope at the tip. You see the probe, ultrasound probe. So it is a convergence of an endoscope. The tip, it has got an ultrasound probe. It allows detailed views of the entire GI tract wall as well as adjacent structures. The sensitivity is around 95%, whereas the specificity is around 95 to 98%. Its sensitivity is comparable to that of ERCP, diagnosed ERCP. It is non invasive with an excellent overall sensitivity and specificity and highly dependent. You need to be an expert endoscopist or gastroenterologist to do this. And the best part is that. It can diagnose biliary sludge that cannot be detected by any other more imaging modality, even MRCP. And it should be considered in patients whom there is suspicion of common bile distance with a negative MRCP. When you land up with MRCP negative, the patient has joint days, raised alkaline phosphatase, raised bilirubin. So you always think sent to a center where they are having this endoscopy, endo ultrasound probe. So this is how a common bile duct stones look like. It had a circular picture always you get a radial picture. You can see the stone here with the arrows and here is a huge stone in the mid CBD. Next is the uh, com com computer tomography. Everybody knows about this. It has a sensitivity of 87 percent. How do we do this now and a specificity of 97 percent diagnosis but centers in cities where you don't have an MRI so you can go in for this. This is a study by Kondo et al. showing that CT scan was equivalent to MRCP. How? Once you use the IV contrast media in a helical cholangiography protocol, there is a software that it increases the sensitivity and specificity. This is how it looks like. You can see in this helical cholangiography protocol picture with the common wild duck stones. Normally, we don't see in a 15 slice or a 32 slice machine. The next is MRCP. It is very accurate, non-invasive, diagnosis mod modality for investing the biliary tracts. Same uh, sensitive on more than 95 percent and specific 97 percent. And a review of 13 studies found that the median sensitivity of 93 percent with a medium specificity of 94 percent. But the sensitivity is very low when you see smaller stones or sludge inside which I told you then uh, endo ultrasound is better. The major disadvantage with uh, as compared to ERCP, the MRCPs are you need availability, it's very costly and it is huge investment, you need a big space and inability to evaluate patient with pacemakers, if a patient has pacemakers and some implants, they cannot undergo MRCP. There's a potential once you I had been once for MRCP, MRI, but you feel claustrophobic, you get very if you have a bad feeling inside that and it has got a low special resolution. So this is a almost the drawing as if you have done in the in the textbooks or in the classroom. This is the Galvar, the three this is the uh, MRI picture, MRCP picture, you can see the common bile duct. And this is the pancreatic duct and this is the flow, this is the duodenum picture, the C loop. And this is, is a post cholesterol MRCP, you can see the cystic duct remnant here. This is the right and left hepatic duct, uh, common hepatic duct and common bile duct. And this is the duodenum second part and this is the pancreatic duct. So next is, this is a picture, a 360 degree, I just wanted to show how a 360 degree MRCP looks like. This is how if you see stones inside the common bile duct, you can see a chain of stones, large stones impacted in the common bile duct. Next is the ERCP or we call it endoscopic retrograde cholangiopan photography. It was traditionally used when around 10-15 years when we were in practice. It was used as a diagnostic modality. Now it is main role is on therapeutic procedure. 
for removing all stone, uh, CBD stones. The sensitivity is estimated to be around 80 to 93 percent with a specificity of 99 to 100 percent. It is an invasive procedure done under GA. Uh, you need technical expertise and assume with complications like hepatitis, bleeding and perforation. And mainly it should be reserved for stones with uh, acute cholangitis or stone was not detected by any other on imaging modalities. So this is how it's a feature it's showing how the ERCP is done and this is how a mechanical lithotripsy is done salvage through ERCP. I will show you the video. Coming to intraoperative cholangiography, it has been estimated the sensitivity of 59 to 100%, the specificity of 93 to 100%. It's highly operative dependent and surgeons have started avoiding this procedure because it requires for severe control. Technically unfeasible patient with whether it's severe infl inflammation around the valvula, and the disadvantages are you might not be able to cannulate the system when it is very of very small diameter and the leakage of contrast during the injection might mimic air bubbles uh, on failure to fill the valley tree because rapid injection if you give it may pass into the sphincter or into the duodenum and you might miss them and definitely it increases the operating time. So this is how it is done either through uh, laparoscopy open, you do intraoperative you make a nick in the cystic duct and do intraoperative gram. I will be showing you in the transistic variety. Now coming to the interductal sonography, this is a new addition in the picture and this is a, this is what the laparoscopy probe, you do intraop laparoscopic uh, uh, ultrasound, this is the interoperative laparoscopy approach. A probe is introduced in through the atrial cavity through a tenement trocar and it has reported a sensitivity and specific of 90% and should be routinely be used as intraoperative procedure and reduces the need for intraoperative radiography features. An excellent method for detecting small residual stones in the CBD, even if you have done a, an ERCP. And especially recounted when there is a dilated CBD, CBD with a suspected small stones which are missed by either ERCP or any other diagnostic modality. Coming to the percutaneous transhepatic cholangiography, this is the domain of the interventional radiologist now. This performing patient, those who are not fit for the ERCP or there is a failed ERCP or there is a stone impact of the CBD that play around the distal um, portion of the CBD. Then there is patient has undergone bariatric surgery, UNY, gastric bypass or some gastric surgery in the past, you don't have access through stomach. Then there is extensive intrahepatic stones, cholangiohepatitis. So, it, so it's a, initially it was used as a just diagnostic procedure. Now it has been used, we started being used as invasive as well as a therapeutic procedure. This is how PTC is done or PTBD is done, then drainage. Uh, what you do, you go through the skin into the bile duct, dilated bile ducts. Through this, you can put in a guide wire, just like, or you can do a drainage if there is pus, the system is dilated here, and you can drain the common bile duct relief system. This is the treatment al algorithm for cholelithiasis, which I will be highlighting. So, in documented cholelithiasis, we have a pre operative plan of how to operate, and an intraoperative way of how to manage the thing, and the post operative. In the post pre operative, you can do either if you are trained in laparoscopy, you can do laparoscopy common bile duct exploration with cholecystectomy, or you can go at the state of pre planned ERCP, then followed by laparoscopy later date. In intraoperative, if you have located CBD stone by intraoperative cholangiogram, you can straight away go laparoscopy cholecystectomy followed by open bile duct exploration with a cholecystectomy, or post operatively, you can finish off the laparoscopy and do a ERCP later on. In the post operative stage, you have done the color system, you land up with CBD stone, you can go in for a ERCP. If it is unsuccessful, you can go in for a percutaneous delayed drainage. So, what are the treatment modalities? These are the updated guidelines uh, on the management of CBD stones by Earl Williams, published in Gut uh, in the Gut magazine 2017. The patient, every patient with common bile duct stones, or whether it's retained or recurrent, must be offered. Extraction, they have to be removed somehow. Either do it endoscopically by using ERCP scope or by spyglass cholangiography. You can do surgery, laparoscopy open, 
you can do a diversion procedure if there is a repeated there is recurrent stones you can try non surgical mechanical extraction if it's a patient on d2 you can try percutaneous radiological stone extraction if it's still on a d2 and this random view technique is a new one it is a combination combination of laparoscopy and endoscopy together and endoscopy ultrasound directed transgastric which is erc is the edge procedure i'll i'll tell you later on it electrohydral lithotripsy or extra soft wave lithotripsy or laser lithotripsy chemical dust solution so how will you choose the modality because this patient are risky because jaundice sepsis everything is there so you assess the general condition of the patient the video digestive anatomy the nature of previous surgery the patient has gone through previous intervention on complications the patient had earlier the stone size where the stone is present how many number of stones are present these are very important associated pathology whether a comorbid diabetes hypertension hypothyroid asthma, asthma and you know expertise available the endoscopy is available now or uh, technical expertise available now so ERCP is the main step first modality of treatment is it's highly sensitive and specific the success rate is around 97% the doctor clearly it's a proper expertise 25% required two or more sittings morbidity is 6% mortality is very low you, there are two group of intervention one is you do a pre operative ERCP or a post operative ERCP in a two stages procedure and then first you do the ERCP remove the stones put in a stent do a lap coli or a colonoscopy then remove the stent later on that can be done or you have done a lap coli so after two days you can do a ERCP and take out the stone and put in a stent there is a two stage procedure another is a single stage procedure where you have gone in you are expert in uh, laparoscopy you do a lap colonoscopy and you do a <coughs> colonoscopy in the uh, lap CT experience the same city so complexion ERCP is very everybody is aware of The bleeding might be there, perforation might be there, cholangitis, pancreatitis, or bile duct injury. And few of the cases, it might not be able to do perform the ERC. This is a video on how uh, this is a case. There, yeah, I've got a series of cases. I've got a series of four. So I've got a series of 500, more than 500 cases where I have done lap coli and ERC together. So this is how we proceed for lap coli first. So I'll show you the video. So you. So these are the ports planned for doing a lap pulley first. So what I do initially, I do the lap pulley. Then after the lap pulley is over, I do a common bile duct. But I do a ERCP and remove the stones and put in a stent. I really have, I, I select patient those those who have got very small stones without history of cholangitis or pancreatitis. I have select uh, typically selected, and this is the largest of my series in uh, the city in and and the. So once you are you are doing this, you identify the you achieve this uh, CVS, then you click the cystic artery here. You see the you can either cauterize with bipolar, then you cut it off. So once the critical view safety is achieved, you can go ahead. You can see here the artery being separated. And I what I did here because I cut up in the This is duct because I found there are stones impacted, so I put an endo loop for extra purple cystic duct ligation. Because normally in when CVD stones, most of the cystic duct diameter are, uh, are dilated. Once this is over, the gallbladder specimen is removed. What we do, we make the laparoscopic procedure part is over. Then we make the patient semi prone. In the same sitting, we put it in the gastrointestinal scope. Go in, then identify the papillary orifice. Try to cannulate the CBD. Put in the guide wire. Do a wide endoscopic sphincterotomy. Once that is achieved, you have the guide wire is being stationed inside the common valve. We do a intraoperative cholangiography. Now you can see there was then we do a IOC. Then we see multiple stones here. Now this is the lap coli already done. You can see the cliffs there. We do a wide. We now pass on the sphincterotomy. Do a very wide sphincterotomy. Once that is done, we take out the sphincterotomy. Pass in the basket. 
a balloon then start extracting all the stones this is a basket you can see all the stones coming out this patient has a lot of stones which are the CBD so I am just fasting up the video so, we can, so that we can finish in time these are all the stones that have been relieved once that is done, we good and we again recannulate and put it in a biliary stent temporarily and keep it for 4 to 6 weeks. Then you take it out endoscopically under local analysis. Then we check with the fluoroscopy control. Now, next is this lab CBD exploration. It depends on the several factors like surgical expertise. <coughs> I'll just switch it. Exercise, biliary anatomy, adequate equipment, number of size of CBD stones, stone clearance rates are around 85 to 95 percent, volume rate around 44 to 16 percent, and mortality rate is around 0 to 2 percent. Complications are CBD laceration, stricture formation, bile leak, and definitely low hospital stay. The contraindications are stone diameter more than 6 millimeter and uh, 60 diameter. This is intra intracystic approach, intrapatic stones. And advantage is T2 is eliminated and the risk of CBD structure post of colidogram is eliminated. This is how a transistic approach is done. I'll show you a video here. The similar ports as lab coli. You do a lab coli and do an intraoperative cholangiogram. So before you complete your cholecystectomy, you should do this. This is the uh, fundal retraction and the infundal retraction. Then you just dissect around the uh, in fundibulum, identify the cystic duct, finish it off with the cystic artery. You have to clip the cystic and, and just cut it off, make a nick in the cystic duct, pass on a catheter like this, it's a urethral catheter or any CVD catheter. Do an intraoperative colony, you can see large stone impacted here. Then you put in a guide wire, uh, uh, once the, through that, and through the guide wire, you either you can put in a scope or a basket to remove. The basket which has gone in, and this is a scope with a coloscope. This is a flexible coloscope. You can identify the stone in the common belt of distal common belt. Either you can put in a little stone basket, extracting basket, basket to remove the stone. You can remove it gradually, or you can use volume lasers to fragment the. This is how you can fragment these are fibers through which you can fragment the stone by using the stones using laser so these are the two alternatives once this is done you take out all the instruments you do a completion cholangiogram you see there are no more stones here once you see this is a duodenum with a good flow into the duodenum then you cut the cystical junction put in the endolobe and come out <clears throat> now coming to the lab, that was the transistic approach, this is the transductal approach. The indication of when there is failed laparoscopic transistic exploration or the failed ERCB stone extraction. When there is a narrow entrance and course of the cystic duct, very spiral, very low, or there are walls in the uh, cystic duct, a dilated CBD more than one central, it's better to go in for transductal exploration. Large stones cannot be retrieved through the intracystic approach or in fact it requires requiring systems you should have undergo through the ductal approach right? so the CBD approach multiple stones intrapatic stones and you have a good suturing ability because you have to suture close the colidogotomy and the contraindication now if the CBD is less than 6 million you cannot put in anything into the common, common wild poor laparoscopy suturing ability you should not do this you can either take the help of a gastroenterologist to do ERCP this is, I'll show you how you do a lab CBD exploration here with videos. So you just watch this. This is a uh, post op patient who had undergone polycystic somewhere else a few years back. So you anticipate a lot of uh, adhesions around. So once you go in, you see there are a lot of adhesions around. So you lice lies these adhesions first. I'll just go through them. Lies all these adhesions. 
so you won't see the gallbladder here so you have to be very meticulous and use whole scissors or in good energy sources like uh, harmonic once you identify this you can open the do a colonoscopy with a little knife or a hook then you start flushing the normal stand using a suction irrigator once that is done if this is the rigid colonoscope that is a periodic nephroscopy which i am using the huge stone multiple stones there then i am using mechanical lithotripter to fragment these stones once these stones are fragmented i remove them one by one flush it again with normal saline by putting in an infant feeding tube we flush it off then check again do a check uh, it's a check of the, the gyrodoscope put in a anti grade stent and come out this is how putting a stent into the common wild up through anti grade route so once that is done you close recheck whether any stones are left over then come out then you close the common wild up so you should have a good suturing ability to do this procedure advanced procedure like this once that is done i do a normal check endoscopy to find out whether the stone is inside the cavity this is another video showing how to put in a t tube in case you find trouble closing the common wild duct or you anticipate that some retained stones or missed stones that might have taken place or you don't have good modality of intraoperative fluorescence control this is how you should do a lab cooling first achieve the try to achieve the this is around the hepatocystic triangle identify the cystic uh, artery and this is the duct so you first finish off with the cystic duct once that is done so normally i finished off with the cystic duct also it becomes easier then i this is around this is the common wild duct you can see and you make a nick with a hook cautery put in a dissector and dilate the colonoscopy wound put in a colonoscope go inside you see stones here both the lower part and the intrahepatic part then you take up either with a grass pot or a basket or a lithotripter or a laser or fangward then one that i flush with the line one that is over either you close it with a stent or you can put in a t tube when you are not sure you want to again re explore the patient in the later phase or do a rcp so this is what i was trying to explain you and third is i'll same video i'll show you in which case you should do a diversive procedure similar a post of case you go in old lady who had undergone lab cooling so similarly you anticipate a lot of addition around the right hypochondrium uh, either into the uh, parietal wall you just go in with a scissor a sharp instrument be very pretty clear about what structures are going through it is a total mess so you have to very go slow with this once that is done you identify this is the common wild duct so i was using a nice uh, energy source so once i identify this now you can see the common wild duct that is the common wild duct you give a nick with a hook dilate it the patient had undergone ercb in a few years back and had forgotten to take his stent out he had a big very big stone and lot of sludge inside the cvd so i tried to remove the stone i had done a wide colonoscopy uh, still the stone was not coming out i had to use the medical lithotripter i had to try all means now you see the stone over the stent sorry the stone over the stent first time in my i'll show you again here the stone over the stent huge stone cylindrical stone so what i did in this case i did a colloco dinostomy this is much safer and the getting chances of again recurrent stones also is less the morbidity and the mortality is also less now this we are talking about the main cvd stones or of the recurrent stones so what are the approaches these are the approaches i have already told you it poses a challenge for the management of common wild extents this factor i have already told you what i will happen and the surgical options i have already told you you can do repeated intervention of the ercp or you do internal bleed drain by a colonoscopy or duodenostomy or ruin why hepatic duodenostomy or you can try transdural spinctotomy 
these are the video entric bypasses indications either do a colducodenostomy or a hepatic genostomy or a transgenous sphincterplasty or ERCP sphincterotomy. This I have already shown you lab colducodenostomy, I should not go. Another there is a new method is the rendezvous method. It is a combination of either laparoscopy and endoscopy or it can be a uh, percutaneous approach with endoscopy. So what we do when there is unsuccessful cannulation of the biliary during ERCP, you can't get the papillary orifice. You can try with a single stage procedure like you go laparoscopically, open the give a nick in the cystic duct or common wild duct, put in a guide wire into the which comes out through the duodenum, and then the ERCP takes place. Or it can be a stage procedure when an interventional radiologist does a passes a guide wire through the percutaneous route into the liver with the transhepatic guide wire, which is fed retrogradually into the through the papillary into the duodenum. So you need a good team and logistics. The complicated rates are around 5 to 30 percent, and then it may be possible like perforation or pancreatitis. So I'll show the video. The percutaneous guide was put. You can see here initially the percutaneous guide was put in the common bile duct. Now the guide has come through the papillary orifice. What endoscopy has to do? He has just to railroad into this steel metallic catheter which has come in. Once this is done, you are inside this common bile duct. Once you are in, you do an intraoperative cholangiogram and see whether it is there or not. Now you can see you are there inside the CBD. Now you see there are stones, lot of stones here. Then you do a wide sphincterotomy. Now he is doing a wide sphincterotomy on the papilla. Once that is done, you take out this sphincterotome, take out the catheter, this is put in a basket. And take out, you can see the stone here, large stone, and remove them with a the basket. This is how it is doing, it is being done. Now, the stones come in. Once the stone comes in, you do a check cholangiography, put in a stent, and come out. It becomes easier. So this is what I was talking about, rendo procedure. Suppose there is a failed ERCP or surgery, what you do? You can try other things like mechanical lithotripsy, you can do scope with a spy glass which I will tell you now. You can do laser lithotripsy, I already told you laser or NDI or extra shock as you do in kidney stones. What is spy glass cholangiography? It is new unwanted, it is very costly one, it is being manufactured by Boston Scientific with a spy scope. What you do? You directly visualize the bile duct and the pancreatic duct. It evaluates both benign and malignant conditions and you can manage difficult stones also in the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct. You can take biopsy of common bile duct or pancreatic duct and you can manage strictures in these uh, ducts. So this is a direct visualization system manufactured by Boston Scientific. This is the single plug connection with the digital controller, integrated digital controller. This is a spy scope which is attached to the common bile duct. This is the, uh, the schematic presentation of how you put in the gastrointestinal the tip attached to the uh, spy glass. So once you are in the target area here, so you can see the common bile duct here. A catheter passes into the through the duodenum into the common bile duct. If there is some pus or something, you can irrigate them or you can even suck them. Then if you find any, you come out when you find any sort of tumor here, just like in common bile duct. You, you have biopsy forceps to take biopsies from the cholangiocarcinoma or anything like that. Then if you have a stone, you can pass in a laser fiber, only on the crush the stone. So these are advanced scopes and it's very costly and what I heard is disposable also. So it's very good thing to directly access the bone bile duct and the pancreatic duct. These are the calculated by manufacturing by stars. For electrohydraulic, which I have shown you, this is a pneumatic uh, method for lithotripsy. There are other non endoscopic and non surgical options. That is what we really lose domain now. We do a percutaneous transhepatic bulletin. Normally, it is done for a sick patient with a dilated system through which, through the transhepatic route, through the transcutaneous route, you can put in a temporary external drain or internal drain. 
or you can put in a stent also like this a metallic stent through this where you don't have access through the duodenum so when there is sepsis with this acute cholangitis you can put in safely it is easier because hardly you give analysis and this so you can also create a transhepatic fistula and put in something a catheter something through which you can put uh, methods of basket retrieval laser lithotripsy through only the transhepatic route <clears throat> so now this is a biggest problem poses a big biggest problem because with the advent of bariatric surgery lot of uh, we are excluding the stomach in most of these cases either we do mini gastric bypasses or do an gastric bypasses this patient tend to land up with gallstones in years to come so uh, there is a balloon so what how do you access when there is no access to the deep room how do you access the two methods of doing it and this is known as edge procedure this is the gastric pouch in ruan gastric bypass what we do we do an ultrasound endo ultrasound then through that we identify the gastric remnant put in a stent here and through the this gastric pouch you can access into the duodenum number one number two is you can do through laparoscopy through troca you can go into the gastric remnant and pass on the scope and uh, these are the your methods which i've come in so this is a video technical video of course not by me i borrowed it so these are the ports 35m ports and this is a 12 km core where you will pass a scope scope into the duodenum once this is done this is the access laparoscopy access you take a positing suture on the gastric remnant this is how you should try fasten the video and then you do a gastrotomy and through the gastrotomy you can pass in a 12 mm uh, trocar directly into the gastric remnant and that is done you just <coughs> carry the the stay which is straight to the abdominal wall now you do pass in a diagnostic endoscope do a sphincterotomy and remove the common wild extensions now once this is sphincter identify you cannulate then you do a wide sphincterotomy put in a guide wire identify the stones there and we take out the stones as you can see there is retrieving the stones with a big stone which is a pattern once that is done now uh, here is the stone that's coming out Here is the stone. Once that is done, you do a check for angiogram and put in a stent. There are also chemical dissolution agents. We know since ages that oral or acidic acid has been documented to have potential role in facilitating stone clearance, in reducing the signs of the common wild duct stones. There might be also there are studies also showing direct infusion through the common wild duct through T tube or PTVT use of heparin, sodium chloride, mono octanoid. To fibrate, so the method of distillation flushing, you require multiple sessions with invariable success. The still literature has certain literature has got some studies that have been made. Completion definitely a fever, cholangitis, even as a base enzyme and pancreatitis. So one of the challenges you will come across biliary stricture. How will you manage in duodenal diuretic? How will you manage when in the internal biliary fistula, the previous ERCP related complication, acute pancreatitis is. Portal biliopathy, cirrhosis, bile leak, some patients, impacted stones, intrapatic stones, colloidal cysts, residual gallbladder, underlying malignancy, previous GI surgery. So these are areas where you have it's a big challenge and one has to be very careful while managing this type of patients. To conclude, common bile duct stones is a commonly encountered diagnosis for most of the general surgeons. Management depends on the decision making based on the clinical presentation and investigations, the timing of the presentation in relation to the surgery, availability of the technology, expertise of the surgeon, the endoscopist and interventional radiologist. You should have a good team of endoscopists and interventional radiologists at your disposal if you are going to do this kind of surgery. Surgeon must be familiar with all possible options at disposal. So my take home message for today evening. Lecture should be. Its management is quite complicated. Ultrasound, MRCB are the routine diagnostic modalities in most of the centers. Trans cystic or transduction 
method is a standard method for IVP, sorry, method uh, for managing this center with low morbidal mortality. Pre or post operative ERCP should be done as an alternative method. According to me, ERCP should per perform as the first step in, in event of failure, lab, cold local lithotomy can be taken over. Open, always remember, open approach is always the final option and remain the final option when other modalities fail. Definitely, electrohydrolithotripsy, ESWN, laser lithotripsy, and dissolving solution have a special indication and more clinical trials in this area must be performed. So, thank you very much. Thank you once and everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Patnaik. I think that was a great presentation, really comprehensive, lucid to understand and supplanted with videos, which was self-explanatory. I think it was a comprehensive overview of CBD stones. Thank you. I'm delighted to tell you that we have a lot of questions which are there from the audience. So I'll just uh, uh, take the questions one by one. Okay. This is a question from Dr. Arunesh Dube from Rudki. He says, if MRCP is revealing a 13 millimeter CBD with smooth tapering of the distal CBD, suggestive of age-related narrowing, should we explore CBD or cholecystectomy would suffice if LFTs are normal? He means to say there is a CBD stone. No, no. So he, has, he has, what is the diagnosis? Uh, he is saying a 13 millimeter CBD <laughs> with age-related distal CBD narrowing. Would yes, CBD has got a stone? No. Okay. If the age related dilatation in when when the patient ages when in elderly group, normally the CBD gets dilated. So if he doesn't have any jaundice, why you should move, go around and uh, touch the common bite? Only uh, the cholecystin will suffice. Very uh, Chakraborty from Mumbai has a question. Okay. Can UDCA be used for dissolution of gallstones? If yes, what's the dose? If? If yes, what's the dose? Okay. Now the common uh, dosage is around 300 milligram DD for six months to one year. Even even after that, depending on the dose, dose if by body weight again, they have you, the new recommendation says around either you give it OD dose around say 600 to 800 now or you can give 450 BDOs. But if the duration should be six months to one year at least minimum. And we also prescribe to our bariatric patient which I undo. After one month of the surgery, I keep on advising taking this Udka for six months to one year. It's safe drug. From Panipat, Dr. Devendra Sharma has a question. What is your choice for concomitant gallbladder and CBD stones? The ERCP laparoscopic approach or the laparoscopic approach only? Cholecystectomy with CBD exploration. What would be your advice? And though yeah, you have to first, I've already told, I've already highlighted, it's, it depends on patient's uh, composition, what patient's uh, clinical condition, number two, what is the diameter of the CBD, okay, what is the size of the stone also. This size is bigger, more than 10 centimeters, according to me, uh, uh, if I try ERCP, suppose I am a surgeon, I am doing ERCP, I am an expert, it took me almost 10 to 15 years to learn what is, how to manipulate through a ERCP scope. There are few surgeons in India, those who do ERCP simultaneously. So I took up, took it up as a challenge. So I have done a larger series, around 500 cases, of which I just showed in the first video. I do the laparoscopy, make the patient semi-prone, and put it in a catheter. Before that, I keep on assessing the by endoscopy to know whether I can do a ERCP or not. So I go into the CBD, take out the small stones, put in the stent and come out. Okay, so that is safety first. So if... Uh, common bile duct is less dilated, very small stones, less than one centimeter. You have to do a pre. Suppose you are doing ERCP, you can do a ERCP first, do the lap coli, then take out the stem later on. Suppose 
you don't have that thing, you can do a lab pulley first. Then next day or within 48 hours, you can send the patient to the center where they have got ERCP. So they can do ERCP and put in a stent and the patient can go home. So pre-ERCP, lab pulley, you can do it or lab pulley, post-ERCP can do it. Suppose you are an expert in laparoscopy, advanced laparoscopy, you have got the expertise. So if the common bile duct at least more than one centimeter dilated with larger stones, if, if you can perform this lab colloidocotomy or CVD explosion, it will be much better. Uh, Dr. Avinash Desai from Baroda, what is the role of ESWL in treating CBD stones? That is all in the uh, literature. To me, ESWL has got no role. So, since it's all already in the documentation and in the literature, it's it has to be mentioned some way or other. It is very good for recurrent renal stones rather than for CBD stones. Dr. Akash Trivedi from Gurgaon. Should intraop cholangiography be considered as routine or there are specific indications? Now, this is a very good question. Doing intraoperative cholangiogram, you should have the fluoroscopy CR with you in the OT number one. So, it's better uh, to assess the patient if the patient had history of jaundice or not. You assess the liver function enzyme, whether the alkaline phosphate is the best indicator to know if the patient had history of jaundice, say, bilirubin more than two or three, and a raised alkaline in the past, you always suspect this patient must be having some stone. So better to do a MRCP first, because doing a cholangiography is very difficult. If you have, you are very expertise, you know how to do a cholangiography, then you can do it. Because I have never done an intraoperative cholangiography, that is very tedious. You, you might not be able to cannulate and you you will be exposed to radiation also inside the OT. So better you send the patient for an MRI. You, you, at least you are sure there is no stone incident. Then you finish off the uh, cholecystectomy, lab, laparoscopy. You tell the patient in in future, if the patient has got some jaundice, fever, to immediately come back to you. So that you can reassess again with the MRCP and do a ERCP and put in a stent and remove the stones. Uh, Dr. J.N. Kothari from Mumbai has a question. Since there are chances of retained CBD stones post-exploration, what is the best precaution which may be taken? Suppose you have done either open surgery or laparoscopic surgery. Always best thing is to put in a stent, either an anti-grade stent or put in a T2 and come out. Because you are not 100% sure whether they have totally cleared or not. There might be a chance that few fine, tiny stones must have gone into the upper billet tract, say the left or the left right hepatic duct. So at least if you have got a stent, when the patient comes, try to do a ultrasound first, trans abnormal ultrasound. If there is no stone, you take out the uh, stent. Or if there is T tube, you do a T tube cholangiogram. If you see stones, best thing would be to go in for the ERCP, remove all the stones, then take out the T tube. So for stone clearance, uh, there is uh, on the table identifying it's better to do a cholangiogram, intraoperative cholangiogram, because doing while doing laparoscopic CBD exploration, doing cholangiogram becomes difficult. Only you can put in a cholangoscope, or you have to be sure with your Rigid scope, what what colloscope which you are using, and you have to search around, and that's how you the less chance of missing a stone. Dr. Sudeep Bose from Gurgaon, is there any criteria to decide pre-op whether an open cholecystectomy with CBD exploration should be take, carried out, or to avoid a conversion on table? Or majority of the cases of polydocolithiasis can be managed uh, laparoscopically only? Yeah, again, a good question, doctor, but uh, it depends on your expertise. Suppose you have done laparoscopy surgery for almost a decade or two, you should be able to do most of the difficult cases, number one. 
and uh, this again selection of the patient by history by investigative modality you should come to know how much the valve is thicken whether you can do it or not there is nothing wrong with putting in a just a umbilical port uh, around 6 mm port and putting in a 6 mm scope and seeing what is the condition inside the abdomen only by doing that if you come to know whether you can do the surgery or not putting 2 3 6 mm port doesn't make a difference when you are going for a subtotal cholecystectomy so better do a diagnostic laparoscopy first with the help assess for at least 15 minutes whether uh, that is what the uh, in the previous talk i had given even in my lecture abcd or lap coli you assess the gallbladder whether you can do it yourself are you confident of you can try mobilizing certain structures if you are able to go ahead then you can go in for a lap surgery procedure if you don't feel confident it's better if you are confident with open surgery then you should opt for open surgery till you learn that habit of doing lap surgery Rajesh Rathod from Delhi. Is T-tube insertion mandatory post CBD exploration? I don't get it. Again, can you repeat? Is T-tube insertion mandatory post CBD exploration? No, it's not mandatory. Better if you put in an internal some some stent and come out. Because I always put in a uh, anti-grade stenting because it's very easy. The stent costs hardly thousand rupees. So, if you have a good suturing ability, it's always to put an internal stenting drainage than an external drainage, because if you are not sure, if you are not sure whether we uh, have missed some stones, T two has a very limited role. T two has a very good limited role when uh, the other conditions, when a very grossly dilated CBD, uh, you are not sure whether uh, or the patient is very sick, very sick patient when you have exploded CBD. i put in this tt because the recovery is faster and the chances of leakage is less so if you put in tt and do a internal drainage also doesn't make any any problem so you can put a internal biliary stent put in a tt or come out after 3 weeks you do a tt cholangiogram you see everything is flowing down there is a stent inside you take out this you are safe at least when there is septic the patient in septic shock anything we have done open surgery or a laparoscopy or old age the friable uh, patient then it better to put in a tt whereas in other cases you can try internal bleed drainage and close the colder room to sumit sinha from patna a patient presents with cbd stones and pancreatitis is it prudent to carry out ercp which may aggravate pancreatitis or go ahead with surgical exploration of the cb the patient has got pancreatitis always remember pancreatitis usually occurs due to stones inside the cbd because the sludge both because both the lumen open in one opening that's the at the papillary orifice so if pancreatitis is due to this common bile duct stones is the main cause so that's two school of thoughts if you don't drain the cbd at least don't don't take out the stone my view is that you just put in a stent if it's bigger stones put in a stent and come out if it's smaller stones or sludge just do a sphincterotomy just balloon uh, extraction you do a balloon remove all the way you put in a stent then pancreatitis will resolve so in in case the patient when it's uh, in shock or asepsis you can try a transhepatic way of putting it into if you have a dilatory system to be So that is that you have to. It's a technical challenge. You have to uh, think uh, uh, twice before you jump into which method will be better. So for assessing, you just have to see how the patient behaves, how the patient is in the ICU or something, and these are very important. If the parameters like the pancreatic enzymes are not raised, you do a CT. You will find out if there is. interstitial edema pancreatitis or the mild pancreatitis you do a ctsi score of the pancreatitis atlanta scoring of the then you decide which is the, is the mild to moderate better to put in if there is a recurrent pancreatitis the patient comes in you better do a ars and stent it and there is a raise liver enzyme also should be there okay i think we'll take this one last question dr batwal from dule what do you prefer to use as a tool for extraction of stone from the cbd 
while doing laparoscopic CBD exploration. For going into the CBD laparoscopically, you need a colonoscope, which again is costly and has a very friable equipment. Passing a scope through a 5 mm or 10 mm broker, you need some uh, guts because they normally the tip breaks. So my suggestion will be, you can from stores or local, uh, you, you can buy a rigid scope. There's a penetrating nephroscope around 14 French, or 12 French are also available. 10 French are also available. You can put in through the 5 mm trocar or 10 mm trocar or 7 mm trocar in the epigastric port. You go in. The best modality of is, is the the instrument is the electro hydraulic lithotripsy which I showed you from either stores or it is locally available from Ahmedabad. So you can take a solid uh, rigid probe to crush the stone or you can put in a basket to remove the stone. You can use a balloon to extract the stone from the form adductor or you can use laser to crush the stone or you can do pneumatic lithotripsy to crush the stone and or you can use an infant feeding tube in the form adductor and flush them so that the stones come out and you retrieve all the stones. So uh, I think we have almost come to the end of the questions. So I wish if you could just sum up and give the closing remarks before I give the vote of thanks. So my, first, uh, before I close this, uh, it's my advice to all surgeons, mainly young surgeons or the person who have finished their, their specialty in uh, surgery, they're going to for practice or joining job want to have independent practice. My advice is that first do around 100 lab coolies. Once you are happy with your procedure, then jump into advanced surgeries like lab safety exploration. Always take a good help of your senior doctor, doctorship. See how they operate or you can call them how to operate. Always be sure that if you fail, somebody sh there should be to help you out. The endoscopy should be here because you can't learn uh, after surgery immediately you can't learn endo endoscopy like ERCP scope it's very difficult the learning curve for ERCP is almost three to five years and this gastroenterologist also don't get a chance to do how to do a ERCP after passing the DM courses also so if you have got that nick this I have learned it took me almost five years to learn ERCP in my career so I've been doing ERCP in the last two decades so that decades because every every sort of um, uh, exercise is available with me. If there is no uh, endoscopy, I can do it manage myself. So everything you should. So my advice to all the surgeons is that first do a lot of laparoscopy, be adapt to how you should do it. Then you start doing some cases, initial cases with the easy case, a dialed system with there is no no inflammation, nothing. So once you start doing this, you immediately you start learning also. But you should also have a good camera system, with good instruments, hand instruments to carry out these surgeries. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shijay Patnayak. It was an excellent deliberation on the management of common bile duct stones. It was lucid. And moreover, it was more illustrative and your videos, I think, made it very simple. And the queries, the way you handle the queries, I think it was the most practical answers which can be given to the questions. Your medium of delivery was very lucid. I think uh, the key messages are percolated to our delegates. I am happy to share that we had 553 doctors from Pan India who yeah. have uh, witnessed today's webinar. So yeah. I thank you all for sparing your precious time that too on a Saturday evening, that too in the current scenario where you are really supporting our Indian COVID patients to fight this dreadful disease. So thank you very much to one and all. A special thanks again to Dr. Shrijoy Patnayak. Thank you very much. Anytime you call me, I can again keep on giving, just giving, giving lectures. Sure. I love teaching people. Sure. Thank you. So kind of you. So let us all stay indoors, stay safe. Stay healthy and may God bless each one of us. Have a great weekend and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.